So away we go. The West Tigers beginning their time in NRLW. Such an exciting occasion, Ruan Sims. It absolutely is, Speedy. Thank you. And welcome to everybody at home, either listening or watching this game. This is a nice little start, a nice little spread here from the Tigers to, uh, to get going. But this is a great opportunity for the new franchise. Pryor is their dummy half. Betty Welsh moving it on to Christian Pia, who played 11 games for the Eels over the past two seasons. And there's Nevada George, also a former Parramatta player, also played for the Dragons as well. And good signs on the first set. And Sarah Togatuki takes it up on play five. And the kick down towards the fullback. There's Sun in issue here. And the catch taken by Zali Fay. And met solidly by Filiae Rasambale. And Sialata. Good composed start for the Tigers. Great kick chase off the back of it too. And one player speedy I'm really looking forward to seeing is uh, Bo Vete Welsh returning from injury. She's an absolute star. I'm looking to her to light it up for the Tigers. Another former eel. Wonderful fullback. Bo Vete Welsh. Jill Aruz in New South Wales rep. Kennedy Cherrington, who was in the Live Water Sports Studios yesterday. Breaking news as she told us that Pearson and Elsie Albert were both out. Now the kick to come from Jade Fanua, who replaces Pearson in the halves. And here is Vetty Welsh bringing the ball back. She played just limited minutes in that trial game uh, about three weeks ago now. Yeah, good to see her moving comfortably, though. I think that's a really, really great start. I like the width that the Tigers are, are looking to play. Just move the ruck of the Eels around a little bit and try and find a few cracks. Good run. And they would have learnt plenty in that 24-0 loss to the Sharks in their trial, and they get the first penalty of the game here. Josie Lanaz with a strong hit-up. And the whistle blown by our referee today, Rochelle Tamarua. Solid touch finder from Emily Curtin, who plays alongside her twin, Sophie, coming off the bench later on. They've been at the Tigers for a while now, playing in the Harvey Norman Women's Premiership. And they won that comp last year. The Curtin sisters prominent. Emily kicked the winning field goal that day. George now. And Curtin, quick hands, a little too quick for her outside player. It was Kezi Apps trying to flood through there. The, uh, I reckon if you sort of, we had a look back on replay, that one needed to go out the back to, to the fullback sweeping around. There was plenty of attention on Kez. There's Talisha O'Neill. Last time she played in the NRLW as a Dragon five years ago when you were as Talisha Quinn. Also a former New South Wales and Jillaru representative. It's great to see her back back in the NRLW. I know she's pumped for today. Married Connor and we've got three kids together. Oh, knock on. And trying to take advantage is with the help. Trying to improvise, but it wound up being a double knock on. It will be Tiger's ball after Abby Church was unable to hold on. Keep an eye out for Jakaya Whitfield as this game progresses. She's got wonderful leg speed. She comes from a sevens background as well, so she's very powerful. She's not shy with contact. And this is pretty smart, pretty smart work. Unfortunately, there is another little knock on there, so that's why it was called back. But you get her in some clean air, she's lightning. This is one of four jobs that she does during the week as well. Jakaya Whitfield working with the Greg Inglis Joanna Academy, working at a mental health school as well. Hard worker, day in, day out. Driven back, strong defence here by Parramatta. Wonderful tackle. The halfback getting involved there for Nua. And Pryor turns it back into a gain on the next play. Making her NRL debut. There's an Oz tag in background. Actually born in Parramatta, so making her debut. 
in the suburb where she was born. And the Tigers get another penalty here. This is wonderful field position for the Tigers. You know, they've sort of sat in the arm wrestle for the first five minutes of this game. And I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what they do in good balls. We know Brett Kamali had plenty of tricks up his sleeve as a half himself. So looking forward to seeing what he's passed on to his charges. He's had three or four coaching roles at the club. He's the interim coach of the men's team last year that has taken over the women's program. Togatuki looks to set them up in front of that right hand upright. And now the Tigers can put on a pet play. Pryor, flat ball, trying to crash her way over P.O. Nice hands, Pryor, for some second phase. They switch it out to the left for Curtin. Double pump, Vetti Welsh trying to get on the outside. And Parramatta's defence was good enough with Toei Hiku making the one-on-one -on -one tackle. Now Nevada George and the Tigers knocking on the door here. They go back to that left-hand side for Kurt and Betty Welsh, try-scorer, history maker for the West's Tigers. And a dream return after 16 months of heartache and plenty of time to work on a celebration like that. This is what I love about what's happening in Try July. We're getting lots of try celebrations and that one absolutely deserved it. It's so great to see Bowie back and running after that ACL injury. And on the Harvey Norman replay, we see here, Curtin takes the line on beautifully and then draws in that second rower as well. And it's a three on one on the outside. Fergo, Bo eats those up for breakfast. She sure does. She loves a little short side opportunity, but I really like that set from the Tigers. They had a bit of variety within their attack. We saw some second phase footy with the offload. They made the most of that territory, asking enough questions of this Eels defense on their line. And Bo Vede Welsh, that's the one you want to see with the footy in her hands with a little bit of an attacking option on the short side. Three games for the Roosters in a couple of stints, four games for the Dragons, okay. five for the Eels, and now on debut as a Tiger scores the first try. One co-captain was running the decoy in Kezi Apps, and the other uh, would uh, find the meat pie. And they've been great ambassadors for this club already. Betty Welsh and uh, Kezi Apps doing a lot of media commitments and now the conversion attempt coming from the 30 year old debutante played for the Wallaroos in last year's World Cup. Pauline Piliate Rasambale and strikes it nicely but just misses. It's 4 0 to the Tigers. Time off. Team playing catch up in the opening 10 minutes here after the first try scored by the Tigers in their first game in this competition by the fullback Bo Fetty Welsh. What about the contact? There's real concern here for the replacement front row, Maddie Jones. She'll be a short HIA candidate as the Tigers go left again and they'll get six more here. What a run back. Sala Tongatuki, this is what she's good at. She just pins the ears back, drops the shoulders, and just gets low to the ground. Look at this spray by the Tigers. Plenty of running. They're loving the left-hand side attack, Alana. Yeah, they are. They look like they've turned up to have a bit of a crack, which is crucial. They want to win this game, get the first one under their belt, and I like the mindset so far. Making the ball sing here. Two. See you later. On the right edge, product of the pathways at the West Tigers, like so many in this lineup today. Nice hands, right hand side for Rakia Horn, another former Eel. And they're inside the red zone again. The go forward comes from the experience of Sarah Togatuki. Again, they go left. Pio looking for an offload. And Parramatta making sure to wrap up the footy. Got it away too late. That's a handover. 
Yeah, yeah, I think they didn't really want to hit the leader on there. They no, wanted to hit out the back. They had the numbers sweeping Summer. around. Uh, just pulled the trigger on the wrong Summer. one. However, Summer. this isn't a terrible position to finish this as way. long as their defensive line can compress and get some line speed and try and pin the heels down the cage. This will be the HIA for Maddie Jones. You'd reckon the stoppage here? It was massive contact. Massive contact by Sala Tongatuki as she brought that ball back off the kickoff. And what a great set, Fergo, after points by the Tigers. Yeah, very good set. You mentioned it off that kickoff. Look where they've ended up. So to be able to gain that territory, it just puts all sorts of pressure back on the Eels. Sala Tongatuki, she is such a strength for this side. I mean, have a look at that. Pure power, but she also offers them, offers them a lot of direction. She's been the person so far for the Tigers that have just straightened them up. They're playing direct footy off the back of her. I think that's where they got a little bit lost because she took that hit up. They had uh, another another tackle and then they were sort of okay, lost. They need to play off the back of Sala Tagatuki every time she has the footy in her hands. So Kyra Simon called upon early here. Her fifth game in the NRLW for the former Knights and an Indigenous All-Star as well. So this experience off the bench. And the number 19 jumper here for the Eels. Go to. Into their middle stocks. Taking a hit. Simon putting a hand up here for the hitter. Losing Elsie Albert on match E. Far from ideal for their coach, Dean Witters. And that tackle getting away from Tongatuki and Pio. Just a little bit of feeling starting to creep in there. A little push and shove, but that was lovely to see at the end. Are you going to tackle King for touch? So midfield here, we've seen a lot of the players or teams opt to tap midfield. We've seen the Tigers take a kick from midfield. No tackles. But here, Eels, they want to tap and go. All right, straight up 30. Oh, Get space. Sherrington can pick up the metres immediately. She'll be back for another hit up on this set, you'd imagine, Kennedy. All action, all energy. Key player in the run to the grand final last year. With that try here, sealing their spot in the grand final. Now O'Neill, 34 years clear. young. Oh, oh, no, you pushed out. Three. Reuben Cherrington, sister of Kennedy, is the dummy half. And Simon takes them inside the 30. Question straight up, it gets square. Ho, oh, oh. A couple of plays for oh, Parramatta to try and answer here. Good strong running inside oh, the red zone. There's Amelia Murphy. What have they got on the last? The kick to come from Fanua. Tumbled across field. Awkward. But uh, nice work by Lanaz on her debut. Well, it was a pretty hard kick to gather. It was a bit of a wobbler, which could have played uh, in a positive way for the Eels, but cleaned up very nicely. That was, that was a good set as well. They finished in a really nice position. So it's all about defensively now, that line speed, getting numbers in the tackle, which they have done so far. Never get square. The dominance in run meters. Go three. We just saw a moment ago. Three. Over 250 now, the Tigers, and Paramatta just over the 100 mark. Two meters all the way. Oh. Awkward fall here for Tonga Turkey. She's okay to play it. See Alata running some Finish. nice lines already. Oh. The 19 year old. Billy out there. Russell Barley puts it up. No thoughts of hunting a 40-30 and brought back with interest by Abby Church. Well, the kicker was set really deep there, but just couldn't get quite get the purchase. She'd set in behind the 40 to try and hit a 40-30. And unfortunately, yeah, the, the kick came off a little too tight off the boot there. Got some breaking news for you. Maddie Jones is OK to return. It was a Category 3 HIA. Looked worse than that on first inspection, but given the all-clear by the Medicos. I think my, I would have been a Category 1 if Salah hit me like that, that's for sure. <laughs> Penalty earned here by Ruby Jean Kennard, another teenager, strutting their stuff. And this is where I think both teams' discipline really needs to start tightening up. We've seen a couple of penalties from both sides. One invited the Tigers into great field position and then two in a row against the Tigers invite the Eels into great field position. You can't keep giving this team such opportunities. Cherrington sisters combined there and now Kyra Simon taking the line on. Cialato wrapping up the footy. Wait. 
They go left-hand side. Zali Faye running out of room. Getting away from that touchline. She did really well. Kennedy has another crack. Sherrington to play it. Wait. Late in the count. Wait, go for it. And trying to crash her way over here is Kennard. Help. Held up by five Tigers and the upright. Coming to end goal here. Held up. Go back on the tin. Go back on the tin. Last tackle, tin. Are you going in? That no, close to tackle. her first try in the go NRLW. Go. Has to go back and play at 10 out. To go right hand side for Fanua. Double. A juggle there from Abbey Church, and that cost them the chance to get it on the outside. Defensively, I think the Tigers handled that set really well. They didn't look too challenged by what the Eels were throwing at them. They look so far like they're missing their starting halfback in Rachel Pearson. Uh, One-dimensional attack at times, but this is something that they're going to have to handle and come up with some more challenging options when they get that chance to attack. And to Funga, we've seen her before for the Roosters as a winger playing in the centres for the Tigers. Look at that go no, forward center. on play three. Hold, hold, go three. Almost entitled to a penalty. Togatsuki held down for a long time, but Pio going on the back of it. Nice offload. George didn't push the pass. Worried about Curtin being in front of her. Try for the Tigers, and look at the way they're rolling up the field here. Into the red zone again. To the other end, Marasambali, nice looking kick off the boot, Church had to be brave and was. Yet again, a set where the Tigers just ate up field position, what was that, about 85 metres in a set of six? You know, that is wonderful, obviously Tonga Tuki set a really great platform through the middle. That second phase play is really starting to trouble the Eels. Oh, just a clean loss from Toi Hiku. This is a great opportunity for the Tigers now. They've been able to get good territory. We've seen them work their way up the field, a couple of really good fifth tackle options, but this is their chance to attack. There we are, we get another look at it. They've got great territory, Root. They do, and it looks like they're setting up for a left scrum, so look, look to see them load up that open side. I'm interested to see what shape they have, but I kind of thought they'd set up midfield and just try and get Bovete Welsh with a bit of space and use her leg speed, and that, we'll see what they've got, what, can, what they can throw. Oh, on play one, a no-look kind of pass, and CLR knocked it on. The apology comes from the 5'8", to the uh, uh, Russell Bay. Who takes out some frustration there. That's the understanding between the Cherrington sisters again. Ten on now! And square, White! Go for it. Simon moving it on this time for Kenna. Right, last tackle! Give it on so who do they look to here? Fanua has already been on kicking Love duty. It. The other option is the youngster. And it is Berryman Duff this time, tumbling one down. Oh, Zali Faye! Making something happen out of nothing! So much talent for the 22-year-old on the left wing for the years. Oh, here we go. Oh, do the limbo, <laughs> folks. Stop it. That's great. Love a bit of limbo. That's an all-timer. That's a top five immediately. <laughs> well done, girls. Uh, that was that was a really great chase from Zali Faye, and we've seen some good moments from her in last year's uh, last year's competition, and then this one again, as we see here on the Harvey Norman replay. She's got the ability to get up. She timed it absolutely brilliantly, but reaping the rewards off that last play kick, I thought that was still a really good position to place the footy, but Zali Fay, she's got to take a lot of ownership over that. That was yeah, wonderful. It was great, and Berryman Duff, it was a wonderful kick under significant pressure coming from her inside, so she showed good composure and she took a knock after she kicked it as well, but 
Zali Faye is so competitive and you know we spoke about this multiple times in the calls yesterday. Gus's favourite saying, you let the ball bounce, you invite disappointment into your lives. And the reason it lives rent free in my head is because it happens so consistently. But it was a well placed kick and Zali, like we've said, she just competes on everything and she's fast too. Her in open space, woof. And you've got to be clean in that contest as well, gathering the footy, because the bunker looks for any kind of uh, knock-on in that situation. She was so clean in gathering the footy over the top of Lanaz. Now the conversion attempt is across the face. It's all locked up. Try a piece in the third try in the career of Zali Faye locking things up. I thought the limbo disappeared in the 80s, but it's obviously it's making still alive a and well. It's making a comeback. Absolutely. Like this, surely, Sportsbet, come on, this has got to be worth more than the five for Try July. Just like Jess Sergis's one last night as an ode to the Matildas should be worth more. Yeah, they're risking life and limbo there. So. Good action here in the first 20 minutes. Kizzy off the legs! It's square, hold! Murphy took the shot at goal and acted at dummy half there. Kyra Simon was ready to go when she got the early call. She's been heavily involved since coming on. And now Stowers, all of her experience with Faye outside. And look at the footwork from Zali Faye. Such a smooth mover. Got that uh, athletics background. Three. Long legged winger. Three. And now O'Neill. Rumbling away upfield, and Parramatta have steadied here. here. Sherrington in just her third Go game it. in the number nine role. Simon again. Just tucking the footy under the arm and providing more go forward. Interesting kick. Not Reuben Cherrington's best choice. She had so many numbers outside her on the right-hand side to go through the hands, potentially. That wasn't the right option there on that one, and Reuben probably knows it too, so watch her to work really hard in this defensive set to uh, to make up for it, but it was just a miskick. kick. She kicked the ground at the same time as the footy. Take it back, that's tackle two. No, no, wait, wait. Take it back, Marcus, push up. 19, push up. Come back on. A little pedantic, we can go now. Oh, big contact again. Togatuki only knows one way. And there to greet her. Murphy and company. Looks like she's earned a rest too, Sala Tongatuki. She's been great to start this game for the Tigers. Off the back of it, they were able to score first points. And now Pryor, off the back of some second phase. Wonderful one-on-one -on -one tackle. Made there by nine. Fenua. Nine. Again, the sudden issue. But Zali Faye gets there and takes it on the full. Move together! It's square up to here. Wait. Go one. Fenua, not square! So experienced Sarah Tongatuki. A wonderful opening shift in her 20th Murder. game. And after playing 19 games as a rooster, Karen Murphy medalist in that Roosters grand final win. Start of last year. And that was after beating the judiciary to earn her spot, of course. Three in on the tackle to slow down. Sherrington. Simon again, this time rocked back by Kezi Apps over the top. She might have been Nevada George copped a bit of friendly fire off the back of that too, but this gives Bovete Welsh front foot footy. But if we get to see a replay of that tackle at the moment, the Eels are just running one out. And when they run one out, it means defenders can line you up like this. So you just need to make sure that you run with some support, try and take a bit of pressure. And oh, here we go, an error for the Tigers. Will they challenge? 
Looks like it's just disappointment for the winger, Whitfield. In the middle. All right, scrum in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, loose carry. Scrum. Yeah, in the middle. Ladies, you're on the scrum part. Great starting position here for the Eels. That's an interesting look. Welcome back. <laughs> How good is that? That's the helmet, neck strap. At least she's okay. That's the positive, though. Okay, right. To Able to come back the on the field. Have a photo of that to remember her debut by. Break! Emily! Expansive footy here. Off the back of the scrum. Getting the fullback Church involved. Her third season as an eel. Her all-time favourite player. Nine zone. Billy Slater. I should be loving playing in that fullback Sorry, role. Don't push up, two. Gets involved again here. Run. Quick hands. Sally Fay pins the ears back and has a double. And Parramatta are in front. Well, that's the key to the way that the Eels have to attack. That time, Sally Fay got early footy. She's got so much pace here. She's got another one here. How good is that? They practiced. Uh, but she needs early footy. And we're going to see uh, this again on the Harvey Norman replay. But the defence should have been all over it. They were in the right position to be able to defend her just through the hands. But you, you see that last little effort? She's got the gas. So as long as they can continue to create those opportunities, Shawnee Stowers has to mix up the way that she attacks the line to create that. But that was key. Simple footy. Had to go through the hands and nice and early. Yeah, and I think the prior to the first try when they had a raid down this left edge, Shawnee just tried to give early ball without actually taking and engaging the defender first, where they've made the change the last couple of times and she's taking on engaging that winger, drawing her in, and then actually giving some good possession to Zali Fay, who's got that athleticism and that power to always find her way to the line. But that was another one. Was that mimes or was it stuck in the mud? Or what would you classify that as, Speedy, that try celebration? Well, I was hoping you were going to help me out, but uh, it was freeze frame kind of statues? stuff. Statues? Statues. Yeah. They all got into position, and it was Ali Faye's second try, so you've got to go through the repertoire. They've also got a few up their sleeve. <laughs> Mahalia Murphy is the backup goal kicker and won't register here. Away. Come off. Zali Faye putting her name up in lights. As many tries as the number on her back and as many celebrations as well. Everyone Definitely. strike a pose. Statues. I love it. I think the limbo's got it covered there. For the best celebration so far today. So the Tigers now have to play some catch up. Oh, so awkward. And well done. Jay Fanua. 26 year old. On debut, picked to come off the bench on Tuesday and then elevated to the starting lineup as the halfback when Pearson was ruled out yesterday. And of course, she'd be the first choice goal kicker as well, so they've lost in that department with no Pearson. But they're leading by four here, the Eels. Abby Church played her part in that try, so too did Stowers, and that time the right read by Lemaz. Jamming in off the wing to lend a hand. O'Neill rocks. Flinging it out the back for some second phase. How quick is Church off the mark? And there's space being opened up here. Important tackle made by Lance to Funga at the expense of a penalty. Well, that one didn't need to go through the hands. That last pass needed to sing over the top. Virgo, we were looking at that on, on the wide view, and it just had to go that little bit wider, didn't it? They had two they had four, or three on, three on one on overlap. One. A four on one overlap. But that's experience, isn't it? That's time in the game. This is round one. Still getting her bearings with that contraption on her head. <laughs> yeah, well, you're probably right. That wasn't her. It shouldn't have gone to her, the yeah. poor thing. 
Feel smacked. In saying that, this is a great spot to attack from. And she is again. Ebony straight on. Ebony square. Setting one. things up, the middle four. Hold, go, one. Berryman Duff. Oh, a little too tricky, didn't need to be. And shocking pass that O'Neill didn't stand much of a chance to handle. No, when you're running those shapes, you really need to make sure that that ball is nice and flat and soft hands when it comes out of the hands has to be soft so that it just hits the middle of the forwards running hard about to go into contact so they don't have to think about too many things other than just catching and hanging on to it but that one went a little low and a little firm for Talisha and a lost opportunity for the Eels here we go we'll get this on replay yeah just on the outside of a hip there down a bit low catchable but always tough when you're about to go into contact don't forget it's a triple header right. of rugby league action on Nines Wire right. World of Sports today. This is game one. Afterwards, we've got the Sharks against the Raiders. Right, the together, two new clubs head to head from Points Bet Stadium. Go and one. after that, the NRL. Nico Hines and the Sharks against the Sea Eagles as Kezi Apps breaks through and has support from Curtin up towards halfway. Pretty right. Welsh right. there. And right. dummy right. half to go off the back of it. Did well to regroup defensively on their right hand side, but it's play on as the ball jolted loose. No restart to the tackle count, so play four now. I'm straight up now. Ten all the way. Go forward. Forward. And right up the middle. Ball comes loose, taken out of the grasp of Falau Vaki. Well, they put. They relieved the pressure on the Eels there, but I thought how they started that set and the big signing to start this club at the Tigers was Kezi Apps. They built the club around her and players want to play alongside her. We've got an injury here, but that line break just shows what she does for this Tigers side. She straightens it up. She creates opportunities because she's such a big draw card. Defenders are going to come towards her. We'll get another look at it here. No, oh, this was off oh, the back was, of this her This was run. off the back of it, yeah. but again, this is perfect. Bovete Welsh coming in and playing off the back of Kezi Apps. I thought the rest of the players missed the mark there a little bit. They've got to jump on those opportunities. So as Johnny Stowers receives some treatment, we'll take a quick break. is back to her feet. Looks like she'll play on for now. After this, earlier on, as Kessie Haps. Well, that's that break you were talking about, Fergo. And I like when the Tigers shift that ruck a little bit. Take it away from the middle, make the Eels have to travel laterally. I think that's really going to bring a lot of benefits for them. Just over five minutes to go in the first half. 35-minute halves in NRLW. Sherrington moving it on this time. And Nuru moved it on to Jones. Sherrington again. Looking for a quick play of the ball. Here's Ruben Sherrington. Kennedy tries to find a half. Berryman Duff did well and put it out in front of Stowers, who was a little flat footed. Five-eighth was hoping they were on the move out wide. Yeah, it was the right idea. The opportunity was out there. The pass was right. She just wasn't coming on to the ball at any kind of pace. We'll get another look at it here. But there's that opportunity. There was a shot up out of the line. Shawnee Stowers, if she was running at pace then, they would have been laughing. They would have created that two-on-one on, on the edge. But I think as a half, Fergo, you were a half, you don't really want to be getting the ball that flat. You need that ball to be coming when a bit deeper. So if it's coming off the lock, the lock has to set deeper so that it gives you that opportunity. Yeah, I think they're really missing Rachel Pearson because she manages the game and then they will be able to play off the back of her. That then brings in the running 5'8". She's getting that momentum and everyone will play off her. So you're right, 
But they are missing a really key piece of their puzzle Sitting in the way that the they work around the field. Square, yep. Yes. Sophie Curtin, twin sister of Emily, who receives now. And they've created the overlap. Oh, great read. Toei Hiku jammed in off the wing and nailed to Funga. The Curtin twins combine again here. And Sophie has to hand it over on the final play. Don't forget to be at Belmore Sports Ground on Sunday, July 30 for an epic NRLW doubleheader. The Knights take on the Cowboys, followed by the Tigers taking on the Sharks. Tickets start from $10 and kids get in free. Head to nrl.com slash tickets now. And there's Monique Donovan ready to come on, a player you know a lot about, Ruan. Yes, and I think this is uh, this will be good for them. So I'll be interested to see, or oh, that one's... Pair Cole. But uh, it'll be interested to see how Donovan is used because predominantly plays as an outside back. So if that injury to Stowers potentially gets worse over the halftime break, we might see her on the other on the other side. Stowers. Moving okay there. Interesting time to make changes, just the three and a half minutes out from half time. That looked like a, a knock on in contact and that's the adjudication. Well done, Ebony, Ebony Pryor, getting up in the face and creating that error. Yeah, that line speed, particularly this close to half time when fatigue's come into the game a little bit. That's that extra effort that you need right on top. Put her under all sorts of pressure. She was worried about getting pumped then. Only 153 centimetres tall, Ebony Pryor. Be very popular with the Tigers fans, I reckon, with her attitude, the way she plays. That number nine role, she's been heavily involved already. And darts out of dummy half, so great field position here to try and hit back. After taking the lead early and now trailing by four. That's the player for Pryor to go to Curtin. Oh, Leanta Funga. And the winner wasn't quite looming large on the outside, so holds on. Betty Welsh was the decoy that time. Oh, there you go, sister. You're best catching that one. What a great pass from Emily to Sophie. Back on the angle. Nice change of direction here. Popped up. Who wants it? And Toei Hiku said, I'll have the footy, thanks. What a shame. They created such a good opportunity. That runner back on the inside, they had an overlap on that left edge, but no support. They've got to be pushing with that play. I thought that was a much better set, actually. They asked quite a few questions that set, so it was a shame they weren't there. But now the Eels get to finish the half strong. Yeah, that was the change of direction that came from Varki trying to set things up and one more pass and they're on the outside. One more pass if she was running a short angle and then two women free, the centre and the winger. They won't like watching that back. But they need to watch it back at half time, and Brett Kamali will have the iPad out, won't he? <laughs> I reckon Noddy will be all over that one. Four points down, they could have been level at half time. Well, the kick comes from Berryman Duff, the 22 year old. Her NRLW debut today in the comeback trial from an ACL. And brought back by Lanaz. So this will be the final set for the Tigers, barring a penalty in this first half. What can they do with it? Whitfield. Able to keep her feet for so long. And gets the quick play of the ball, ultimately, for Curtin to go to work. And she does earn the penalty, so they'll get a full set here after the touch finder. And they turn this into a, a four-pointer or maybe six. Standalone fixture here at Combank Stadium today. Nice crowd has gathered for a noon kickoff on a Sunday. And they're inside the red zone here, the Tigers. Pryor looking for her playmaker. Goes to Togatsuki back on after her rest. And they keep it in tight. Four for now. Bucky. No chance of an offload. Jones saw the back. And trying to crash their way over. Tonkatsuki could not hold on. More disappointment for the Tigers with good ball. And Kennedy Charrington leads the celebration for the Eels, who will take a lead. 
to half time at the break at Combank Stadium. It's Parramatta eight, the West's Tigers four. It's pretty much two new look sides we've seen out there today. And, and I think that's reflected at times throughout the first half, some unforced errors, but so much talent. You uh, mentioned Speedy the Eels being up. They've done wonderful to score a couple of tries. And I think what the Tigers have done really well is worked for that territory. They've punched through the middle and had some good attacking options. So once they're in and around that 20 metre zone attacking their line, I expect to see even more from them this half. Tidying up the execution inside the red zone would have been a key feature of Brett Kamali's chat, you would have imagined, as Jones is rocked on the opening play of the second 35 here. Cleared of her HIA early in the game, Jones. Nice work, keeping the legs pumping there from Muru. She's been good for them since she came on. Oh, Kiwi International. Changing the angle is Stowers, so no injury concern in the first half. Put behind her. Back up dummy half is Capri Pico, as she calls herself on the pronunciations. We thank the clubs for getting those pronunciations to us in the lead up to this season. So many new faces, new names to prepare for. And they go short side here, the years. Making her Eels debut after three games as a Dragon in 2020 and has to hand it over here on the last. Looks like the Eels have uh, made a change to that left edge. Talisha O'Neill, I was about to call her Quinn. Talisha O'Neill is off the field. Shawnee Stowers has moved into second row and looks like Monique Donovan has moved into that left centre position. Rakia Horn. And the Dragon and Eel. Whitfield. Her work rate has been high. Slowed down in that play the ball. Tonkatuki able to hit the ground running and keep it alive as well. What a phase of play and there's a second offload on play four for the Tigers. Right up the middle they go. Now a chance to get expansive, perhaps. And they keep on rolling up the middle for Sarao Vaki. Try, did well to hold on, not held, so it's play on here. And well done. Good communication there. Broom and Duff calling a teammate out of it to ensure there was no offside issue. That kick at the oh, end of the set. <laughs> great line break. That kick at the end of the set was a shame because that was a great set from the Tigers, a couple of outside backs to kick off their set, and then Sala Takatuki coming in to straighten them up. But on the other side, Rue, the Eels are doing well. Who's that down in backs like? Kezi Apps. Oh, no. After that tackle, she stayed down, and oh, no. Hopefully she can get back into position, but she's in the hands of the trainer now, so we'll keep an eye on that, but we'll stay with the action, Speedy. Yeah, the Tigers defending with 12 right now, and we're holding our breath for the Tigers co-captain. As he apps such a stalwart of the game as Stowers cuts out Donovan to go to the try scorer. Zali Faye with two under her belt already and knocked out of her hands and a chance to gallop away for Pryor. He run down by Berryman Duff. Looks like Apps is going to take her position in the line. She might have just uh, got crunched up in that tackle, maybe copped a knee through the chest, but she's in position on that left second row. We'll see what the Tigers can throw out now. They're in really good field position. Plenty has happened in the opening three and a half minutes of the second half, and that's travelled forward. I think the touch judge tipped up the uh, referee in the middle, made the right call, clearly knocked on, even though it was uh, somewhat behind curtain. Yeah, Tamaru had uh, signalled that it was play on, and I think it was definitely a call from the touch judge there, who was in perfect position. But this execution really needs to be tidied up. I'm pretty sure Brett Kamali will be wanting that to be a feature of this second half, to be nice and clean with ball in hand, and when they get into good field position, to make the most of their opportunities. Yeah, well, if Bovetti Welsh got the footy then, Mahalia Murphy had already bounced back off to her outside. So the opportunities are there, holding the football in two hands and taking the line on. That's the key for Bo. Certainly eye-catching the early contributions from Donovan. Really good mover in the number 18 jumper. And we've already talked about Muru as well. 
He's made the switch from rugby union to league in recent years. Roman Duff moving it on, keeping it simple for Stowers. And now Church trying to put some footwork on Rakia Horn, a former teammate. Go for it. Back to centre field for Kennedy Charrington. Nevada, last one. On the last, just outside the Westpac red zone. Go. Not late. Fanua stabbing one in behind, right under the chest of the winger Wetfield. And a long way crossfield to try and find some room, and she has found it. What a run, what a return from Jakaya. That was a great return by the winger. I think. The half was surprised at how much time she had to kick that footy and just took too much time. I think we've got here in our bottom screen, we're looking at the coin toss from the Sharks and the Raiders, Speedy. And Tiana Penatani, who managed to gain a release from the Eels, the captain of the Sharks, alongside another superstar there. What a pickup, getting Zahara Temera to go to Canberra with her sister, Shanta. First time they're playing together as well, the Tamara sisters. but. This is a really good scoot okay. yes. out here Pop from on. Ebony Pryor. I really like her as a player. She's built low to the ground and she moves quite well, but just when they're shifting right to left, I, it's looking a little bit clunky, Fergo, because the passes aren't going to hand, they're going behind or they're coming out of the hand at a weird shape. Yeah, I think they're just a little bit off the pace and I think you can tell that there's new combinations out there for the Tigers. Uh, it won't take much to fix things up for them, which I think is good. They just got to get a little bit more depth and come onto the ball at pace. There is some continuity when you think of that 2022 Harvey Norman Women's Premiership Grand Final side. Nine of the 17 that played today were involved on Grand Final Day, so you'd expect a bit more cohesion in Game 1. Sometimes the nerves could be playing a bit of a part as well, but uh, I would like to see, especially when we're going right to left, that should be bread and butter stuff. That should be nice and silky. We go that way now for Vetti Welsh. And still going. Almost out the other side. Tanua got some help in the end and needed it. Back to centre field they go. For Sophie Curtin. Try to go to the right hand side now. For the uh, yeah. Russell Marley trying to go right over the top of Stowers, who had to get down low and make the tackle front on. Now Togatuki, Sarah Togatuki will take some holding up here, and they got bodies under the footy there impressively. The Eels. Who was the speed hub under that one, Virgo? Marcus, push up. Geez, they did well to get under her. Oh, they did very well to get under her. But, she, but that's the opportunity she's a. Uh, she invites for this Tiger side. There were four, four of them there that had to handle her. And now Horn trying to get on the outside. Zali Faye came off the wing, made a crucial tackle. You can see they're inside this West Pack red zone and how much more opportunity. Great tackle again to shut that down. The Tigers women have had. Oh, great hands. Berryman Duff able to juggle it off her chest and somehow reel it in. Hey, get her in the slips. Get her in the slips. What a... What a nice bit of work there by Perryman Duff. But what Fergo was talking about, being in that red zone so many times, having so many tackles, they really need to start capitalising on that field position and that opportunity. Some key moments defensively by a load of Parramatta Eels on that previous set. Here we go, look at this slips catch. Bang, off the chest. Got it. Done some nice things today, Perryman Duff. And to Funga, making the one-on-one -on -one tackle there. On the back foot for the kick on the last, off the outside of the boot a little. They'll take that, falling just inside the touchline by centimetres. Kicking game is going to get a massive boost when Pearson comes into the lineup. Yeah, I think they've certainly missed her game management at times in her kicking game. Fifth tackle options, I think that's the part of the women's game that has significantly improved, but you can see the depth of some of these squads and Rachel Pearson not being here, how much they miss her. That's another really good run from Ja'Kaya Whitfield. She's been great starting their sets, coming in off her week. Really powerful game. So is Rakia Horn, who takes the second one off the back. Like, this is wonderful work by your OBs. And Pryor, look at her go. 
Been uh -oh. so good between the 20s, haven't they? The Tigers moving down the ground so easily. Now they just need to make it click inside the red zone. George moving it on for Curtin. Nice hands. Betty Welsh. Wrapped up this time by Fanua. Apps helps out at dummy half. Curtin only knows one way. Centimetres away from the try line. Now Pryor looking for her playmaker. Finds the other Curtin. No look pass. A few of these players got a putt and no lookers until about round five. Yeah, Rue spoke about it before. Just that timing's a little bit off. The passes aren't going to the right spot. They had pretty good shape. Probably didn't choose the right option in that instance, but timing, we get another look at it here. Timing's just off. You had to find Bo Vete Welsh there. Oh, good run here by the Eels. Get themselves out of trouble. How much value add is there in a no look? For a pass. How much value add? Yeah. If it goes right, massive. If it goes wrong, the coach is just pulling their hairs out. Well, it just didn't have to be that. No. It didn't have to be. There are times when it works, but pick your times. You don't have to do it always. Stowers. Look at the cut out Donovan who That's now nice. gets on the outside and look how quickly Horn made up the ground. And the ball, worried about the touchline, actually went forward from Donovan. Wonderful tackle from Rakia Horn. They look dangerous. That was a lovely option, Zali Faye coming in. And then the support around the outside, but easily cleaned up by Rakia Horn. She's been great both sides of the footy. Worked for a long time as a prison officer, Rakia Horn, and now works as a forklift driver during the week. But the way she made up the ground here defensively was so impressive. I played two. Curtains combine again. George able to keep it alive. Betty Welsh busting one tackle. Okay, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. moving it back inside for Cialata. Tonkatuki moves so beautifully for a middle forward. Nice hands here. That's a kick in the end. Deliberately from Curtin on the fumble. Well, they gained some metres there, fortunately. She was lucky to get away with that one. That was a great shift out to the left, and there was something definitely on out here, but unfortunately that ball doesn't go to hand. So this is a really tough ask now here. The Tigers can't be letting the Eels out with easy field position. They need to make sure they shore up this defensive line, get some speed, start putting some wax on and control that ruck speed. Faye has come looking for work. As you'd hope from a winger at this stage. There's some tired players in the middle right now. Donovan moving beautifully. Wrapped up by Horn once more. Low scoring game. We've seen a lot of tries scored across the round so far, but it's a bit of a grind here in ideal conditions. Game very much in the balance. Okay, let go. And miscommunication there to hand it over in that part of the ground. Yes, I don't know what happened there. Or was there I don't know if there were comms around that it was last, but, you know, two-pass shift off an edge. you just got to get to a kick. You can't be finishing with a tackle on the 40-metre line. Oh, apps! Right through goes Kezi. Look at the speed. What a run, Kezi apps. And gets a quick play the ball. Off the back of it, where's the support? Now it arrives. And a good tackle. Tully Hiku, her defence off the wing has been a feature today. Snuffing out multiple opportunities for the Tigers. It's another oh, good run. It's just the edges are missing their assignments at the moment. They need to be pushing up and just getting proactive with what's happening. Only midway through the count here. Chance to go to work in the red zone. George to play it right in front of the uprights. With two more plays up their sleeve. Curtin to the out there. Rasambale. Now, Rakia Horn doesn't push the pass. Holds on. So Lanaz slots into dummy half. Crossfield kick. Who wants it? Good take. And Tafunga won't be able to get it free. She does in the end, but knocked on by Curtin, who maybe gave up on the play. Yeah, that was close. That option to offload last minute was definitely on. She did well to get up there. But again, 
they need to push around the footy. Bruce said it after Kezi Apsa's line break, which oh, we, we get to see here. The issue was the no kick on the last play. They turned it over near the 40 metre line. Kezi Apps made a wonderful run and they got great territory, but they just need to push around the ball a little bit more. Stop thinking about what they're going to do next and react to what's happening. Ruben Charrington, the dummy half, trying to organise her runners here. Simon puts her hand up. 50 minutes gone in the first game of our triple header on Nines Wide World of Sports today. More action coming away from Points Bet Stadium after this NRL women's than NRL men's. Kennard to play it here, back for her second stint in the middle. Berryman Duff drops it over the top. Easy for Lanaz. Opportunity knocks here for the Tigers to be winners in their first game of NRLW. If they can find another try. Up over halfway they go with a clean line break to Funga, and there was support that time. Murphy able to make the tackle, an important one on Whitfield. Betty Welsh out of Dummy Half. Togatuki cruises around one, takes on the fullback. Sarah Togatuki with a massive solo effort for the Tigers on their debut in this competition. A memorable try from Sarah Togatuki. I say this every time, Speedy, but is there anything more glorious than seeing a front row across the try line? And this one in particular, it's not even going to be a boast that she ran for more than 30 metres to get this. She has been taking... To lie to her parents for a long time there. She was a netballer and wanted to play rugby league and didn't let them know for a long time until she made a grand final. And she told them, when did a grand final play rugby league, by the way? You might want to come along. You get bruises in net netty, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> they are next level athletes, netballers. Goal kicking could be a difference maker today. What can uh, Piliate Rasambale do here? This could be crucial if she can nail two points. And she does. So a converted try for the newcomers puts them in front by two here. Can the Tigers do it in their first game ever in this competition? That's why the embroidery is on all the jumpers on this history-making occasion at Combank Stadium. Parramatta have to try and come from behind again. They did it with back-to-back -back tries, but they were both unconverted. The Zali Faye scored on the left wing. And the Tigers do off the back of points last time they scored a try. They went down the other end and had a chance at another, and they're rolling again. Pio's done some great things, and here's fresh legs off the bench. Lasana Lutu, who debuted last year with the Eels. I'm excited to see what she does, Speedy. Lasana Lutu, she was so strong for the Junior Sky Blues in the under 19s Origin last week, and 
I think she's going to be a real one to watch this year. Yeah, Nelson Bartley carrying the ball in both hands. Six off the arm! Here they are again, entering the red zone off the back of points. Tongatsuki takes them all the way to the 10, second phase footy. Nicely scooped up behind. In fact, they get a set restart. Ruled that it was touched there by the Eels. So George plays it. Fresh count. Lutu out the back. Betty Welsh overlap created. And they go back to back the Tigers. They're in dreamland. Well, that's Suki from the Tigers. They got that six again opportunity. But what they looked was calm. And Rue spoke about Lasana Lutu coming off. And oh, how good is this? Seriously. How much time do you reckon they spend? Oh. Oh, you've got to fall Practice over there, Bo Betty Welsh. It's the last pin. You've got to go down. You can't bail out. A frightening amount of time, Fergo. But on the Harvey Norman replay, we're seeing the silky skills straight off the bat of Lasana Lutu. She took the line on. She held it with two hands. She drew in both defenders. And that lead run was the perfect line and a nice pass out the back to Leanne Tufunga. But just look at the way she moves. She is so well balanced. Well, we've spoken a couple of times in the call about the timing being off on that edge. She's come on, she's been calm, she made the right decision, and her outside backs, that edge, had enough time to be able to run their lines and just deliver it nicely. Didn't overcomplicate things, held the footy up when she needed to. A great interchange for the Tigers. Fifth try in her career for Tafunga. And you mentioned Lasana Lutu would have learnt so much from her experience with the Eels. She played one game and then was out of the team because it didn't quite work for her in her first uh, debut. But uh, the old 10-pin bowling routine from Tafunga and only a spare on offer because Vetty Welsh didn't go down. <laughs> Thought she had the strike, but Vetty Welsh said, no, no, only Not nine Not today, pins. Junior. Six-point lead now. And it will remain that way. Kennedy, I just need you one more stick for your team leaders, please. Thank you. So what a turnaround in this game in the last five minutes. The Tigers go back to back from trailing by four. They now lead by six. And the 2023 NRLW season has kicked off with a bang with great contests already taking place throughout round one. Don't miss the Eels next home game where they take on the defending premiers, the Knights at Combank Stadium on Sunday, 6th of August. Secure your seats today at nrl.com slash tickets. NRL Women's Telstra Premiership, real power, unreal passion. has certainly been on display across the opening three and a half games. One more to come to round out round one. Up next, the Sharks against the Raiders. You can see that in the bottom of our screen. Most uh, runs I've seen from a number nine in a long time. Fantastic game for Ebony Pryor. Yes, she is. She's a very talented young player and she's got a good skill set too. But this great shift to get. Oh, this will be six again for the Tigers. Yep, Lutu has been so good on this left edge already. Look at the change it's made. The difference maker. And may well be enough to get a start next week. Will well, Brett Kamali keep her as an impact player? We'll wait and see. She has that versatility. She can play lock as well. But I really do like her in that 5-8 ball or 7 roll. Demanding the footy again here. <laughs> Betty Welsh off the back of it. And this time Parramatta numbering up. But what we've seen in this game, uh, I think Noddy will be keeping her playing that 5-8 roll. She's changed the game completely for that left edge uh, ever since she came on the field. They've just, the timing's on. Such a presence about it as well. Up on the angle, Taylor Osborne. Fairfield born back rower. And her debut today. Lutu once more. There's the outside players. Finds Betty Welsh. A little clunky this time, but it might work out. Whitfield said, give it to me. I've found an open passage, and it is all West Tigers now. 
three tries in about seven minutes. Well, that's really clever footy from Boveni Welsh because she got the ball a little bit late. Lasana Lutu had the footy. She was coming onto it. She was quite deep the way that she was set. We're going to... A nice little selfie for the Tigers girls. We're going to get another look at it here soon on the Harvey Norman replay. But with the front on shot. Her just scanning the defensive line, but having the footy in two hands means that all of those options apply to her. She could have taken the line on herself if they split open, but she chose the right option out the back. Straightforward look here for the conversion. And the Tigers now lead by 12. Well, don't miss an epic first night of finals at the World Aquatic Championships in Fukuoka. Ariane Titmus is leading the charge in the 400 metre heavyweight battle against Katie Ledecky and current world record holder Summer McIntosh. It all is coming up tonight, 9 p.m., exclusive live and free on 9 and 9 now. Smile for the camera with those mouth guards on. <laughs> We didn't see this coming 10 minutes ago, did we? Well, it coincided with Lasana Lutu coming onto the field. Her poise and her ball playing ability has really brought the Tigers back into this match. The left edge that we were just wanting to see more out of throughout the start of this game, Fergo, has come alive. Yeah, it has, and they've been making pretty good metres, great territory, outside backs, uh, getting them that territory, Sarah Togatuki coming in, and they just hadn't have, they didn't have the attack off the back of it, but that halves combination certainly working now, particularly on this left edge with Lasana Lutu. Concern again, as we uh, take a look at that menu for our triple header today. Up next, the Sharks against the Raiders in the NRLW, and then the NRL men's, the Sharks against Manly. Steve Rogers Memorial Trophy on offer there. Matt Rogers will be in the house today. I think it's uh, Salah Tongatuki that there's some concern for. May have been, hopefully, she's just maybe winded, but she's looks like she's getting that knee tested, Speedy, by the trainer yeah, on the, the ground. the left leg buckles. There was also a knee on leg there, hopefully just the corky, uh, maybe on that initial contact, and then all. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. That part of it. The leg gets caught the under the bodies as they go to ground. She's up. And she did, in the trial match as well, she did get a lower limb injury. I think it was an ankle injury. So hopefully she's all right. And she has been an absolute wrecking ball for the Tigers today. Thumbs up. I mentioned those parents that she lied to. She <laughs> recently bought them a house. I know. It's wonderful. She is, she is such a special human and she's very family oriented. And you know, it's wonderful. She knows that she just wanted to be able to give back to that family, to her family. Pio has the arm free, no one looming in support, and she's been an offload queen today. They keep going left for Lutu. It's given uh, Botil Betty Well so much space with Lutu as well. On that side, the fullback has been able to chime in with room to move. See whether they go that way again late in the count here, and as Togatuki is made to work in that play the ball situation. Out there, Rasenbale, nice offload for Horn. Gets the fend off going, busts three tackles. Rakia Horn just growing in stature as the game goes on. What a beast. Going past the hour mark here. Lutu again with so much time on her hands. Good looking kick as well. It was a tough catch for Murphy. Double knock on. First one, Eels. And it is a knock on against her, says the referee. Worth the captain's challenge, perhaps, at this stage. Oh, this is significant pressure is mounting on the eels here as one of their players was down getting some 
treatment in backplane. Looks like she's rejoined the line, but the Tigers, after that knock-on by the Eels, or the double knock-on we heard the referee speak about, midfield scrum. I think this one can definitely open up here for the Tigers. One of those tight ones, if you look on the sideline replay, it may have gone forward, may have gone backwards, but called a knock-on off Murphy. Off the centre field scrum, Rakia Horn coming back on the angle as we check that West Bank red oh, wow. analyzer. Look at that field position the Tigers have had, and they, we spoke about this in the first half, Virgo. They're starting to capitalise on all of that. Yeah, they are. The pressure is certainly building. Nagatuki driven backwards this time, but it's early in the count. Look at Lutu move and flicks it out the back. Overlap created, and Tafuga says, "I'm having a double." And they're having a field day left-hand side. What a difference maker Lasana Lutu is. She has made an incredible difference to this left edge attack of the Tigers, but it's the depth, the way they set up for this try. And it's straight away. It's how she positions herself, which means her outside backs and her support, as we see here on the Harvey Norman replay. She's come onto the footy at pace, dug into the line. She found her full back in Betty Welsh. And then to Funga. What a powerful centre that we've seen her, she's gone over twice now, Rue, but runs the right line, comes back on the inside. A wonderful play to finish things off for the Tigers. And I think key to what you spoke about then was the depth. The depth that she was actually set up off the play the ball. When you're deep like that, if you're gonna play the ball in the 10, you need to be set back at least 10, 15 metres so that you've got that opportunity to fix your defender and, and you either use a swing door to, to flip around or just to try and fix a second rower and then play inside outside on them. So that depth that she's brought, that poise that she's brought, Lasana Lutu has really opened up the left. Well, look at the taste they're all coming onto that ball up. That's why she's so hard to handle. And that's all started from Lutu. Really, really well done from the Tigers. And yeah, we call them interchange players. The Matildas coach, Tony Gustafson, calls them uh, game changers when they come off the bench and talk about, this is the biggest game changer player I've ever seen in the NRLW history, what she's done here. Yeah, she's done very, very well. Turned things right around for the Tigers. Just missed. 16 point lead here for the Tigers and a huge Afternoon of NRLW footy continues straight after this at Points Bet Stadium. Two of the NRLW's newest teams, the Sharks and the Raiders, locking horns for the first time in search of their first win. Then on Chemist Warehouse Sunday footy, the Sharks take on the Sea Eagles. Seven minutes to go. And Parramatta going for the short kickoff as they hunt a miracle. Who wants it? Clean bold. One West Tiger, but there was backup. An experience of Kezi Apps on display once more. And another little injury concern for Kezi. No, it just looks like a cramp. She's all right. Come on, big girl. <laughs> Trying to beat her. Kezi Apps. Curtin has shown her versatility off the bench. Playing in the middle, playing as a dummy half when she gave Pryor a rest earlier on in this half. George, oh, look out. Trying to make a difference with the tackle, but it's play on here. Quick hands, Lutu, and ups. Where's the outside runner, says Tafuga. She could have gone to Whitfield and finished off a, a try of the season candidate there. And now Lutu. Crossfield kick, awkward. Knocked on, I think, by Parramatta. On Tigers, last tackle in here. Is Jakaya owe money or something? Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> she was screaming up on There's the outside cake there. there. Yeah. That was good footy though from Great. the Tigers. Great ball movement if that last one had gone. It's a handover. Silky stuff. Marcus, push up. And a nice little kick too. You're yeah. blaming Tafunga and not Whitfield. So Whitfield okay. wasn't there, that's why. She was, she was that. coming up. <laughs> trust. Trust. Long to get, get some trust. <laughs> get some comms, some trust. No, but I think also, just from an Eels perspective, because they've had to do so much defence, their line speed has dropped off a little bit. Lutu then just had so much time to put that kick up in place. So they really want to try and sharpen that up going forward. 
She's had a lot of time to do everything, which is a great sign for a player in any sport. All the best players they do, they create that extra time for themselves, don't they? So last season's grand finalists with plenty of work to do. Parramatta heading into next week and they take on the Dragons, who'll be stinging from yesterday's loss. A lot of player movement through in, in a lot of teams, but particularly the grand finals from last year, the Eels. What have you made of them this game? I think it was hard for them to come into the game losing two key players in Pearce and, and Albert. I think that adds a lot through their middle and also their decision-making last tackle options and their strategic play. Uh, but I think on the flip side of it, the Tigers, especially in the second half, they have just been up-tempo. They've out-competed the Eels at the moment, and I'm sure that Dean Whittles will look at that throughout the week. And you know, the Eels players, they won't be happy with, with their performance today, but they'll know that they've got plenty to work on. What about a player like Nakia Davis-Welsh? She got left out uh, of the initial game day team for the Eels. Do you think he'll look at bringing someone like her into the match next week? Well, if you want to talk about game changers, she's a game changer. She's got that ability to play multiple positions, but yeah, she's definitely one to watch. Space up the middle here. They've worked it beautifully, and the speeds that turns on the Jets. Oh, they won't catch her. Whitfield up the middle, off the wing, to score another four-pointer. Well, she didn't miss her assignment this time. There was plenty of comms happening around the middle, but this is what I love to see from the back five. I love them sniffing around, getting off the back of a, a heavy run and just taking advantage of that space in behind the ruck as the Tigers look like they're getting themselves potentially set up for another try celebration. Second half scoreline currently reads 24-0. Tigers have absolutely dominated. And they've done a great job as well with their podcast as well for the fans to get to know their players better. Chris Warren, who's the club's media manager, sitting down with uh, Whitfield, Togatsuki and Rakia Horn this week for a fascinating half-hour chat. So check it out on the club's website. And great characters around this club for a start-up NRL WT. And with two minutes to go, they've got two points banked. Coming up later on in Chemist Warehouse Sunday footy, it's the Sharks against Manly. Craig Fitzgibbon has made some uh, big calls selection-wise. Yeah, he has. Matty Moylan is out of the starting side. I think that's the biggest one, but I'm a Sharkies fan. So I'm looking for, forward to seeing the response. They've got a home game. It's set up nicely for them. I think they'll have a big game, but I reckon it'll be pretty close, actually, Speedy. Trindle in the halves. Trindle in the halves. Connor Tracy. Yeah. I don't mind it. That new left edge combination, but I don't mind it. He needs to be playing first grade somewhere. Trindle is that good? He seriously is. That's a great run. Can't ring Nico Hines in the halves, who's been doing video sessions with the halves of the NRLW team at Cronulla. Emma Tonegado is a new look 5'8. The next game coming up, the Sharks against Canberra. Two new teams in the comp. Yeah, Nico Hines, Wade Graham's been spending a lot of time with the girls at Cronulla as well. And also Andrew Fafita. They've had great support here in, uh, in Cronulla. The club's really gotten around them, the community. Looking forward to that next game here on nine. Still time for the Tigers to add six more, the mood that they're in. 90 seconds to go. Maybe one more set after this. As they go through the numbers out on the right-hand side, Betty Welsh for Horn changing the angle. Look at Rakia Horn go! Oh, they didn't lay a hand on her! What a second-half performance this is! Where's the camera, says Rakia? We've got one more celebration up our sleeve. 
quite extraordinary the way they've turned it on in the second half and they look like a team that's going to do some damage. Yeah, they do. They've got their nice little try celebration now. But I'll tell you what we have seen in this second half, Speedy, is some of the talent that they've got in their outside backs and they're getting that territory, which I thought they did pretty well to do in the first half, as we see here on the Harvey Norman replay. But bringing players like Rakia Horn, we've seen more from Tofunga from Whitfield. Bovede Welsh was a key here. You have a look at her. She just holds the footy up, takes the line on that little bit more. But a really great identification for space from Rakia Horn. She's got power, she's got speed, but she knew staying on that outside line wasn't the right option. So to be able to change direction and head for the post, they're a classy outfit. And you've got to pay homage to Brett Gamorley. We were talking about uh, what he might say at halftime. He's brought on Lutu to play left-hand side. And the tries they've scored have been great to watch. They've run all over Parramatta here. Yeah, great changes from Noddy. And I guess that's one of the hardest things, isn't it? Being one of the new clubs, having, you know, a new team to work with. You can only go off what you see at training. But his reaction at halftime and the changes that he made, they've worked brilliantly. They've just been seamless at halftime and they look like a real contender in this competition which is awesome to see. They trailed 8-4 at halftime but they win their first game as an NRLW club convincingly in the end the West's Tigers. A day to remember at Combank Stadium. The full-time scoreline here. The Tigers 36, the Eels 8. I'll stand by. The clock was <laughs> clock was sending me down the river there. There's still 14 seconds to go. They might have another little crack here, the Tigers. Clock stopped, of course. Chip and chase. We saw a lovely chip and chase from Ali Brigginshaw last night in the Roosters Broncos game. I think they start shut it all down. They might just be happy to put the win under their Avoid arm injury. and run with it. <laughs> Don't risk injury. As P.O. does be quiet, Alana. the team discipline thing. What a performance. They'll remember this day forever. These West Tigers turning it around in the second half. Scoring 32 points unanswered to win by 28 in the end.